the best condition factor to use is called relative weight. And um, relative weight at first seems very complicated. The calculations, there are a lot of steps involved. But once you understand what's going on, it makes a lot of sense. And relative weight has been shown to be very good at predicting things like um, uh, survival over winter, for example, um, fat reserves. Uh, it's very well correlated with things like that. And so it's a very good index to use to help you understand the condition of your fish. OK, so how does relative weight work? Um, First, we start by um, creating what's known as a standard weight. Okay, uh, standard weight is made. Each species has its own standard weight equation. And how do we get these equations? Well, what they did is they looked at data, a huge amount of data, for a given species all across. I assume it's mostly North America is where you're going to see this. Okay, so. Um, Let's say we're talking about largemouth bass. So the person that developed the standard weights for largemouth bass went and found these enormous data sets and went to Carlander's book and other books, got these enormous data sets and looked at all the weights of largemouth bass that have been reported across an entire range of lengths. And so basically they've looked at this for this species, this is what you can expect as far as how long they get and the range of weights at every length. And so based upon that, based upon sort of the biological reality of that species, they then looked at the 75th percentile weight for every length. Let me explain that. So let's say um, I get, I'm looking at 200 millimeter largemouth bass. And so from this huge data set, I pull out every single largemouth that's 200 millimeters long. Now you understand that there's going to be a wide range in weights for all those fish. That's the whole point of a condition index, right? So you're going to have some very skinny, unhealthy fish, some very plump fish. You're going to have the average weight for those 200 millimeter largemouth bass. And that seems like a logical number to take, but we don't want the average weight. For condition, we want to use as our standard a fish that's in pretty good health that's relatively plump. We don't want the average plumpness of a fish. We want a fish that's um, a little bit more plump than average. And so that's why they take the 75th percentile. So for all, so you got all these bass, they're all 200 millimeters long, they range in weights. We're going to take the 75th percentile of weight for all those fish. So for largemouth bass, 200 millimeters, I, I think it's around 106 grams. So of all the largemouth in all of North America that are 200 millimeters long, 75% of them weigh less than 106 grams, and 25% weigh more than 106 grams. So that 106 grams is kind of the magic standard. That's the that is a fish that's not starving. It's not getting too a lot to eat. You know, it's getting excessive amounts to eat. It's relatively healthy. It's above average. All right. So that's my standard weight for a 200 millimeter fish. Well, let's repeat that for every length. Now, there's always a minimum for the relative weight equation. Don't forget that. And so for young fish, the, there's a minimum length, that, and so you can't use relative weight. For largemouth bass, the minimum is 150 millimeters. So from 150 millimeters up until the biggest, what's the world record, 22 inches or something like that. Um, for every length, you know, every millimeter or every five millimeters, they calculated the 75th percentile of weight. Then they fit a curve to those data. And that curve is the same form, it's the same exponential type looking curve that you guys created when you looked at your length weight regression. It's all the same concept, um, but now it's applied to sort of all largemouth bass and, and it's applied to just the 75th percentile of weight. That becomes our standard weight equation. And that is published and it's in fisheries techniques and it's in the handout that I gave you. And that is the same standard regression that everybody uses 
that works with largemouth bass. And so that's why it's called a standard. That's, there's a couple of reasons why it's called a standard, but it's standard in that everybody uses the same one. Uh, okay, so that's how it was developed. So all you have to do is go to your handout, and here is the parameters for that standard weight equation. And again, it's in exactly the same form as your length weight regression that, that you calculated for your own population of fish. So it's all the same theory. So now I have this equation, so what do I do with it? Um, I've got my sample of bass, or fit, whatever fish I'm working with, and I have the length and the weight for every one of those fish. So now I'll take a particular fish and I'll plug its length into the standard weight equation. What's that do? That spits out the standard weight for a fish of that length. So basically I'm saying, all right, this bass is 200 millimeters long. I plug that in, it spits out 106 grams. So a healthy 200 millimeter bass should weigh about 106 grams. Okay, well, I know what it does weigh. I weighed this fish too. So I have its actual weight. So if I compare its actual weight to the standard weight, that is a relative weight. It's the fish's weight relative to the standard. And so the standard weight is what a relatively healthy bass should weigh. And I know what my fish does weigh. So by comparing the two, I can say, is my fish relatively healthy? Is my fish relatively plump? Or is my fish relatively skinny? Is my fish excessively plump? That's how a relative works, and that's, that's the relative weight condition index. And so really, the, the trick is getting the standard weight. And then all you do is take your fish's actual weight, divide by the standard weight, times by 100. So your fish's weight as a percentage of the standard weight. And so, so say I've got a 200 millimeter bass and it weighs 90 grams. That's well below, that's less than 90% of, of the standard weight. And so that fish is not very plump. That fish is in poor condition, probably because it's not getting enough to eat. Um, I get a different 200 millimeter bass. Um, it too should weigh about 106 grams if it's relatively healthy or plump. And this particular bass weighs 120 grams. That's a fatty, right? That fish is very plump for its length, and it's doing very well. It's getting plenty of food. It's very healthy. Its water quality is good. That's how you use relative weight as a condition index. Um, so what's the big deal? Why do we go to all this trouble? Well, because the relative weight works a little bit better. It does not have the size bias of Fulton's K. And so as the fish get bigger, their relative weights don't automatically get bigger. You're always comparing to the 75th percentile at whatever length your fish is. Um, and also, then, you can compare across species with the relative weight because the, the standard equation has been developed for each species in the same manner. The, the comparisons are all in the same manner. It takes into account the unique growth patterns of each species. Now we can compare across species. And so if I have a largemouth bass with a relative weight of 110 and a bluegill of a relative weight of 110, I can say that they are relatively in the same condition. That's why relative weight is so cool. So again, the big trick here is working with the standard equation, figuring out the standard weight for all your fish, and then it's a simple, simple math to figure out the relative weight for each fish. And um, once you get a spreadsheet set up to do this, then it's a piece of cake. The math for the standard weight equation is exactly the same as for the length weight regression, regression that we already did. So that's why I had you do that, because it segues right into this. Um, then I guess the last thing to talk about is uh, what do we do with relative weight? Uh, the most important way, you know, you can, you can give the average relative weight for a particular population, but average relative weight isn't all that informative. For relative weight, you really want to look at trends. And so what we'll do is we'll plot relative weight against total length. And you can see if the condition changes as the fish get bigger. 
And if it does, then that suggests, okay, you know, this size of fish is getting plenty to eat, this size of fish is not getting enough to eat. That You can interpret that as, as a, an effect of your forage base, usually. Um, you can also plot relative weight against age. How does the condition change as the fish get older? This, too, can suggest that older fish, you know, the, the, the prey base is different for older versus younger fish. But sometimes when you look at age, you're also looking at health. And as if the condition drops as the fish get older, a lot of that might be due to the fish getting less healthy and getting ready to die. Um, so at any rate, the, that's condition indices. They're designed to tell you the plumpness of a fish. And from that plumpness, you can infer the, the prey it's getting, the health of the fish, the water quality, a lot of different things. You can also make predictions about how well it's going to survive in the future. Um, there are lots of different condition indices. Fulton's K was popular for a long time. It's got a couple of problems. So most people use relative weight now. Um, relative weight has is, is, um, been developed for many species and is used for many species. There are other condition indices that you'll see out there. The liver somatic index um, is basically the weight of the liver divided by the weight of the body minus the gonads. Um, that is actually kind of an inverse one. As the fish are healthier, the liver somatic index goes down. That's because if you're unhealthy, your liver swells. You think of cirrhosis of the liver if you're an alcoholic or something. The liver's processing toxins or whatever, or a fatty liver is not good. And so if the liver is really big relative to the weight of the fish, that fish is in bad condition. So the smaller the LSI, the better you are. Um, another one that we use a lot is the GSI or gonadosomatic index. That's the weight of the gonads divided by the weight of the body. So the body weight, the gonad weight is a percentage of the body weight. And that's going to help you understand spawning a lot. Um, as the fish get closer and closer to spawning, of course their gonads swell, the GSI goes up and up and up. And then if you notice in your population, all of a sudden the GSI drops off. That means, <coughs> excuse me, that means those fish just spawned. Um, so those are a couple that you're also going to run into, but your biggie is going to be relative weight. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so that's condition indices. Uh, take a look at the PowerPoint. Let me know if you've got any questions. See ya.